District 2. District 4 Alpha is clear, thank you. Returning to fire ground. Okay. Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have a fire burner down. He went down the shaft. Just four. He went down the shaft on the fourth floor. Okay, Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have a fire burner down. He went down the shaft on the fourth floor. Okay, Mayday, mayday, mayday. We have a fire burner down. He went down the shaft on the fourth floor. He fell down the elevator shaft to the first floor. Um, that is correct. <laughs> Okay, all companies, the first floor, elevator door is open. He is on floor two. Floor two, pop the door. Command copy. We're sending help your way. We're sending help your way. That's your command. Be advised, we see the firefighter. We got the elevator door open on four. He's down between the elevator and the staff. And he is probably on the second or third floor. Fourth alarm is in King's Towers Apartments, 6020 Dahlgren, cross streets of Ward and Owasco, fire ground command is D2, engine 32, engine 9, medic 29, respond, that's King's Towers, 6020 Dahlgren, fourth alarm is in, fire ground D, David 2, that's D, David 2. I think accessing the elevator shaft now, command oh. received, he's informed. We have to go ahead and get equipment ready for us bringing him out. Okay, that's clear. Uh, command to a medic unit that is available, identify. LS-32, medic unit headed your way to command, sir. Okay, report to the front of truck 31. They're going to bring the firefighter out the alpha side of the building. En route from medic 3. No members actually working at this incident. That's clear. All members, all members, stand by for a bar. Engine 31, give me a bar and location. Bar okay? Uh, 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 second floor or rear? That's the extrication to command. Tom. We have located the firefighter. He's lying alongside the car. He is not responsive. Command received. Command, go ahead and get me a rat pack up here. For air, I'm going to need a extension ladder, portable ladder, and we need that stack. Okay, that's clear. Rescue 9, command. Rescue 9, I need you to uh, breach the side of the elevator. I need you to bring tools up to breach the side of the elevator. Rescue 9, rescue 14, now, third floor. Rescue 9, be on the fourth floor, looking up. He is wet between the walls. He's unconscious at this time. And he's bleeding for three points. Command and communication. Go ahead. SSC command, I need a fan to pressurize this hallway. We're still on air in here. We need a fan to pressurize this hallway. Okay, that's clear. Engine 7, report to my location. Engine 7, report to my location. So to rescue, I'm also going to need someone to get to the penthouse for the elevator and cut that power immediately. Okay, command. Rescue 9, are you available to do that? You got one member that can go up with a truck company? SOC command negative. I need rescue 9 in the elevator to breach that elevator to get to the firefighter. Okay, Tom, we got it. Rescue 9 to command. Be advised, we're getting tools now from our heavy rescue. You send somebody to heavy rescue, and it says, Tessa can talk with tools. Grant, I'm, I'm headed that way. Okay, Tom, I, re I received your information. You got a firefighter down between the, uh, with the car. You use the rescue nine. I'm sending truck 23 your way with a rat pack to assist. Copy that. Copy that. I need to, uh, we need to breach the D delta side of the elevator. Okay, D Delta, D Delta side of the elevator. I'll be sure coming that way. We're in the process of also getting up and laying stuff for you through Alpha. Rescue 9 to command. Go, Grant. Approach and rescue to command. We're going to need saw rolls. Every fan, uh, we're going to need fan set up so that we can get this air moving. And we're going to need air chisels. Okay, that's clear. That's clear. Solves all. Advanced ventilation. Rescue 9 to command. Who need rescue 9? I need a couple of companies with extended climb or little giant ladders. I need them in the elevator shaft on the first floor 
with the ladder leaning against the wall. If, it, if, he, if he comes loose, he's going to fall another story. So we need we need ladders up to the bottom side of the elevator to try to catch him if he comes loose and falls. Command received. Command to all companies. On the scene right now, they're not doing an assignment. Report to the command post. Truck 32 officers. Truck 32 FAO. Need you a pack, Learo. On floor two. Radio Lewis with you if you got him. He's a pack, Learo. It's fine. I'm working. Search and rescue to ground. I need a Stokes Sanskrit on the second floor. I still need that rat pack. Air chisels. And sawzalls. Okay, Mike, we're in the process of getting that for you. Chief Jones, 301, air, chisels, stokes basket. Floor number two, you got that assignment. Received? Command and communication. Go ahead. Mark, there's report number three. Fire's out. Fire's out. Uh, we're still evacuating people from the building. We have an active mayday in progress. We're attempting to execute the firefighter at this time. Uh, send me an additional ALS unit. Have them report the command post to work. Okay, that's clear. Fire's out, mayday in progress. Attempting to extricate the firefighter. We'll get you another ALS unit. Last answer, Command, second floor. Firefighter has been extricated. We'll be removing him out. I need a rescue unit in the lobby, ASAP. Okay, Tom, we got that. Yeah. You're in the lobby waiting for your firefighter. <laughs> Command communication. Go ahead. Firefighter's been extricated. We have treated triage or packs right now. Right now. We're uh, waiting to evacuate him out of the building. Out of the building. Okay, firefighter has been extricated being triaged and packaged at this time. Welcome to the April Fire PO. This month we will be covering the SEMS Accountability and Pack Tracker systems. In addition to the new equipment and software, we're also going to review last year's RIT and Mayday information. It's important that all crews get out and conduct the hands-on training that goes along with these POs. Thank you and enjoy the video. Welcome once again to the April Fire PO. This month we're covering three new pieces of equipment that have been put in service in our system. The first piece of equipment is the Scott SEMS2 tracking program which will be located on all the battalion chief vehicles as well as Division 2's vehicle. This is a vital piece of equipment that can track our air packs moment by moment and keep track of maydays, air supply, and time on air. Our next piece of equipment we're going to cover today is going over the Scott Pack Tracker handheld device. This device can be used to actually locate a firefighter whose passive alarm has activated by using radio wave technology and can give us a point of direction to find the missing firefighter. As you get closer to the firefighter, the signal gets stronger. And we'll go in depth on that very shortly. And the third piece of equipment is the Scott Stems 2 repeater box. This is an important piece of equipment to be used on our high rise type scenarios or large commercial structures. What this device does is increase the signal of the air packs back to the command SEMS computer when the mess technology in the air packs isn't enough to overcome distance or shielding. This would be ideal for high rises, fire on the 15th to 20th floor. We can put one of these boxes on floor 5 and floor 10 to ensure the signal from the top floor gets back down to the lobby for the commander who's in charge of accountability. The first piece of equipment we're in review is the new Scott Sims tracking setup. What Scott has done is gone away from the old antiquated Game Boy style tracking system, which we all have seen on scene, and they've created an actual Windows based software that has been installed on Panasonic Toughbooks. In addition to the Panasonic Toughbook, you'll also see this transponder, which is an additional piece of hardware that has been secured to the top with Velcro to protect it, however, allow instant use of the device. All the chief's going to have to do on scene or the accountability officer, whoever it may be, is simply open the lid, power up the computer, and make a USB connection one time on the back right corner. At this point, the computer will start up, it'll auto log in, and it will auto launch the Scott Stems tracking software. This allows a chief officer or accountability officer to be freed up for the next minute or two, as boot up can take that long, to do other duties, assess situations on scene, or, or provide assignments if needed. 
when the chief comes back or accountability officer comes back after a minute or two, they will see the Scott Sends tracking software has come up and there'll be a setup page. All we do is hit exit setup and the system's ready to use. What he'll probably see is a list of members on the right hand side of the screen where he or she can accept those members over to actually monitor them live, second by second. The huge benefit of the Scott's tracking software versus the old tracking software is that we can visually monitor up to 20 members at one time. We can see them all listed right there versus scrolling through each user one at a time. We can monitor their air, we can monitor how long they've been on air, and we can look for any active pass alarms that may be coming up. And we can also see if any members are out of range where their air packs are too far away and they're not talking to the SEMS computer, which may pop, prompt the commander to put a Scott SEMS repeater somewhere on the scene to, to boost the signal of the air packs. In a situation where we have a mayday, um, we can actively monitor that individual's air supply by selecting assignment detail and, and further view their specifics of their situation. Also, anytime there's an active pass alarm of more than 10 seconds, that person or persons will populate straight to the top of the computer and backlight. In addition, the computer will make a loud a pass alarm sound to draw attention to it from the accountability officer, or the chief officer, or anybody standing close to the computer. This way, mayonnaise will be addressed quickly and efficiently. Once we're done monitoring on scene, it's very important to properly shut down the computer. It's important for the chief to deselect all the members off and close out the incident. When they hit exit, it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to close incident? And it's going to require the entrance of an incident address. Once you've done that, the chief will hit save and close, and the Scott Sims tracking software will shut down. At that point, the computer can be shut down going through the Windows menu, where you'll hit Windows menu, shut down. It's important not to hard shut down these computers via the power button. What this could do is possibly erase the auto login or the auto launch setup of the program. It shouldn't, but it already has happened. So beyond that, once we're done with that, we close the lid, make sure we DC the USB cable, put the, put the computer back in the truck for charging. Now these are going to be located either behind the second row seat or in the rear of the vehicle on a 110 charger, depending on the, the chief officer's vehicle setup. These will be located on all the battalion vehicles as well as Division 2's vehicle. 110 chargers have been installed in all the battalion vehicles. However, they have been hardwired to only charge when the vehicle is plugged in at the firehouse. The reason for this is to not put any more strain on the charging systems of the command vehicles. So it's imperative that we have these plugged in in the truck and that the trucks are plugged in when they're in quarters to make sure our batteries are always charged. Beyond that, the use is pretty simple and now we'll get in depth with the actual use of the Scott tracking software. To begin use of the Scott SEMS tracking computer, simply open the lid, power up the unit, and connect the USB cable to the first back right USB port. Allow the computer to auto log on. This can take approximately 15 to 20 seconds. After the auto logon, the computer will auto launch the Scott SEMS tracking program. The intention of having the computer auto log on and auto start the program will free up the battalion chief or the accountability officer for other duties during the time of login, which can take up to a minute, possibly two minutes, depending on the situation. Once the computer auto logs on, simply hit exit setup and you're ready for use. Now that we're logged on and the program is running, we are ready for use. As you see on the left side of the screen, most of the commands are grayed out. This is because no members are actively logged into the system yet. On the right side, you just saw the engine 88 member pop up under a possible user. The user is selected and then pops up on the main use screen. You'll see his designation, time on air, air volume, and whether they're in range or not. By clicking on assignment, you can see their exact air supply versus just 
a display of the bottle. Additionally, you'll see all the commands now are available for use, including evacuation of individual, all, or assignment. Any additional members that go on air will populate on the right side of the screen under the accept buttons, and once they are accepted, they will pop in on the main screen where the Engine 88 member is currently located. While monitoring, the chief officer can keep an eye on air supply, as well as any active pass alarms. As you just saw, the bottle went from full to three quarters, and after clicking on assignment in detail, we can see the pressure of that specific individual is at 3522 PSI. In a mayday situation, we can actively monitor the air supply of the member whose pass is going off or who declares a mayday and look for large drops like we just saw. Now you see the tank is showing half, it changed color, has two boxes, and we're at 2374 PSI. To show another demonstration, the air is about to drop below a quarter on the monitor, which means the member is in a low air alarm. Do keep in mind that our current air packs now go into low air at a third. However, the SEMS tracking device will not alarm the commander until they have hit a quarter of a tank. In this situation, we still show a quarter and the member is almost to an empty bottle. This is why it's important during an air emergency to click on assignment detail and monitor the member's air pound for pound versus using the color demonstration on the top which breaks it down into quarters. In addition, when this computer went into low air, a vibro alert mimicking sound was produced by the computer to alert the commander. For the demonstration, we have kicked the bottle back on, and you can see that we're at 5,400 PSI at this time. In the event of a pass alarm, you will see the user's name backlight, and you will see a exclamation point pop up on the screen. This occurs after a member's pass alarm has been an alarm for approximately 10 seconds or longer without deactivation. As you see, the pass has lit up and it asks us to acknowledge pass. Right now, the machine is making a pass alarm sound. Until you hit acknowledge pass, the computer will continue to make the sound. Once you've acknowledged the pass alarm, you see it changes colors. The pass just came off of the screen because the member cleared their pass alarm. Here you see we can evacuate an individual person. When doing that, it says, are you sure? We hit yes, and you get a running man. You'll see the running man changes colors once the member acknowledges the evacuation. Here's your change in color, which means the member has told command, I have heard your evacuation and I'm evacuating the structure. In the event a member hits their withdrawal button, which is the gray button on their SEMS pack, a blue running man will pop up under withdrawal. The commander can hit accept withdrawal, yes, which will now gray it out. This is not a button we currently use. However, if it is accidentally hit, the commander can simply acknowledge it and move on. At no time will any alarm sound on the SEMS computer or the air pack when the user hits withdrawal on their air pack. 
To properly shut down the computer, you're required to log out of the program and turn the computer off. If you do not properly log off and hard shut down the computer, you run the risk of causing a lockout for the next user. So it's important to properly exit out. You must enter an incident location. For this situation, we'll use demo. Save and close. Are you sure? Yes. And then shut down the computer. This will ensure we will not have a problem for the next user with a user login or auto start of the SEMS program. Once the computer is shut down, go ahead and close your lid and disconnect the USB cable to prevent damage for further use. So now let's cover one of the newest and most interesting pieces of equipment we're putting on the truck, and that's the Scott's Sense 2 handheld receiver. The intention of this equipment is to allow our firefighters from the RIT team to quickly locate a downed firefighter with a pass activation. Now in the past, when the pass alarm went off, our chief was notified via the old SEMS computer, and we would go into a RIT type deployment using ropes, thermal imagers, and standard search tactics trying to figure out where the firefighter is or was. What we can do with this new system, in addition, the RIT team can have this turned on and when there's a pass activation, they're going to get a warning on the front of the screen. When they accept that user, it becomes a tracking device. So depending on where the user is, I may get a reading of 40% here and 70% here now I know in a wide open area generally where he is. I can focus my attention. As you get closer and closer and closer, the ceiling gets higher and higher and higher. It's a fire department version of Marco Polo. And we'll get more into the specific use of the device, but it's pretty simple. Once we're on scene and we're assigned as RIT, we want to acquire this from either the ladder truck, on scene, or from the squad. This will be located in all three ladder trucks and the squad in a charging base. Once we get it and we establish our RIP team and we're at the post, we want to turn the device on and leave it on. By leaving it on, we'll get instant notification of any pass alarm that stays on for longer than 10 seconds. To turn it on, we simply press both buttons and hold them down. The screen will light up. It'll make two beeps. And then we should see nothing but hash marks across the entire screen. That's because there's no active pass. Even if there are air packs turned on, this will not monitor that. This only monitors air packs that go into an active pass alarm. Once an active pass goes into play, we're going to see the user name pop up. Engine 35 Firefighter 1. That'll pop up on the screen. and It'll give us a number with the signal strength. We want to accept that firefighter by hitting the return button which will now activate the actual minimum to maximum range light display. And now it can actually turn into a tracking wand, almost like a metal detector. If there are multiple pass alarms going off, you can select which one you want to communicate with. So if we have two maydays going on, one person is talking, one person is not, this is probably beneficial for the person not talking. The person talking can give us a lot more information than the one who's down and unresponsive, and that's where this device can be imperative, especially in a roof collapse of a large wide open area where people start to scramble and there's no set place of where I just was. This will be very beneficial in warehouses, high rises, and uh, two or three story commercial buildings. We can even stand out in front of the building and determine what floor the person might be on or whether they're on the Bravo side or the Delta side of that floor by using the wand from the A side of the structure. So the next thing we're going to cover is the Scott SEMS2 repeater. What Scott has done is put a repeater inside of a mini Pelican box to ensure that members working on high floors, below grade, or in large commercial structures can have their air pack signal make it back to the accountability officer's SEMS computer. Now we're told that the range is about one mile line of sight, but shielding distance and elevation can affect the communication of the air packs to the actual tracking computer. Even though our new air packs have mesh technology, 
we cannot overcome elevation or below grade or large structures if we don't have a series of air packs between the end user and the accountability computer. So what we have done now is we've purchased these repeaters which can be dropped in between the tracking computer and the end user of a member on the scene. Our intention is to put a strap on these boxes, they'll be stored on the ladder trucks as well as the squad, and as units are making their way up to a fire floor or deeper into a building, we can simply hang the SEMS box either on an FDC in the stairwell that we're working out of, or drop it on a desk working our way through a structure, or drop it off at the doorway before we go below grade for some of our below grade type fires. What this will do is receive all the information from the air packs beyond it, the information will go through the SEMS repeater and back to the incident commander's computer. Turning on is very simple. It's a simple one press of the gray button in the front. You hear the same chirp you hear in your air packs, which lets you know that it's powering up. We should get flashing lights that lets us know the system's working. And when it's actually receiving signals, you'll get some solid lights. As long as it powers up, it's going to work. At the end of service, when it's time to take it out of service and shut it down, just like your air packs, two presses of the yellow button for the air pack, two presses of the gray button here. And you get the same double click you get when you turn off your air packs. We want to ensure that batteries are good in this, so we should turn these on every day or every other day and make sure that they're working. If we have to change the batteries, it's pretty simple. Fill up screwdriver, remove one screw, remove one screw, open up our box, and on the inside you'll find the exact same housing holding six AA batteries that our air packs have. Beyond that, the use of these is very simple, however it's imperative on our high rises, large commercials, and below grade fires. Good afternoon. Today we'll be covering the April Fire PO, which is RIT Team Drags and Carries. Through this monthly PO, we're going to be covering the acronym LUNAR, assessing a downed firefighter, and going over our Scott RIT Bag. We're going to review and focus on some specific drags and carries and removal of firefighters from difficult situations. We'll also talk about the SWORD device, which is now available on every engine and ladder. Additionally, we're going to be covering efficient and organized methods to carry your tools, including using a ground ladder and a stokes basket. The importance of being prepared for the Mayday cannot be stressed enough. Through comprehensive and frequent training, we can be assured we're ready to answer the call. What happens after the Mayday is called? To be properly assigned first alarm units to handle the Mayday before additional units arrive, which include the second alarm or working fire units. It's freelancing put our members at risk. Here's some keys to staying on task and mitigating the Mayday. Keys to mitigating the Mayday. Activation of the on-scene writ. Additional alarm for fire operations to continue. Requesting additional RIT team if the Mayday is called. Ensure there is a dedicated rescue truck to provide care for the injured firefighter or firefighters. Move all radio traffic with the downed firefighter and RIT to a separate TAC channel if possible. If this cannot be done, then all fire ground operations must change to a different TAC channel. Command should conduct a PAR. We need to ensure no more members have gone down. Constant communication with the downed firefighter is imperative. This lets the member know that help is on the way. And lastly, stay on task with fire ground ops. If the fire goes out and we ventilate, things get better for the mayday. Upon arrival, you are assigned to RIT. What will you do? Take RIT seriously. Remember, it's a dynamic position, not a static one. Be proactive and not reactive. RIT does not stand for rest in truck. We want to stress the importance of establishing RIT early into an incident. Company officers and chief officers must acknowledge that most maydays occur early into working fires. Many times before specifically dispatched RIT units are on scene. Because of this fact we encourage that a I-RIT or intermediate RIT be established by one of the first alarm companies. IRIT is the establishment of a single company or three member RIT. After the initial attack line, water supply, backup line, search and rescue have been accomplished or assigned, one company should be available. This is usually the water supply company. 
While the working fire RIT company is en route, the IRIT can begin the initial assembly of tools and conduct recon of the scene. Once the dispatch RIT truck arrives, these two units can establish a full six-member RIT. Remember, a two-person RIT is not a RIT at all. It's a rapid intervention pair, or rest in peace. Keep your tools organized. Equipment can be placed on a stokes basket or a ground ladder, making relocation more efficient. As previously stated, situation will dictate action when it comes to a RIT response. Special situations may require specific tools. Here are some primary equipment considerations when assigned to RIT. For residential fires, you should consider ground ladders, irons, roof hooks, rotary saw, Scott RIT bag, tick, webbing, and battle lanterns. For commercial fires, you should consider Stokes basket, irons, roof hooks, hydro ram, rotary saw, Scott RIT bag, tick, search rope bag, webbing, and battle lanterns. Upon arrival, it is critical to perform a 360 of the structure. Identify all points of egress. Gather information from the incident commander to obtain what operations took place prior to your arrival. Get a feel for location of all operating units. Properly stage your tools. Consider building construction as part of your reconnaissance. For example, you will need search ropes for searching wide open floor plans or long hallways. The member calling the Meta has a large responsibility, and the fact your life depends on quick thinking is extremely important to develop a pattern of habit. The power of habits formed during training have been proven time and time again. Don't let poor habits or lack of training put your life at risk. Begin the Mayday process by activating your emergency button on your radio. Initiate radio communication with your unit number followed by Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. A good acronym to remember is LUNAR which stands for last known location, unit number and firefighter name, the nature of distress, assignment and air remaining, and resources needed. Some rules to remember. One, Mayday must be called for it to work for you. Two, call for help as soon as you feel you're in trouble. Three, remember the Mayday can always be canceled. Four, remember to place your PAR tag in your unit first thing every shift. 5. Remember to use Lunar. 6. Know and understand your SOPs. Engine 13. Mayday, Mayday, Mayday. Command all units, hold radio traffic. Unit with the Mayday? Division 6, Bravo side, apartment 614. Engine 13, Bingo. Myself and firefighter are trapped by fire in the hallway. Both members have 2100 air. Search and rescue. You don't want to come from the Bravo Charlie Scale and not inspire down in the hallway. Do you copy? Command acknowledged. Advising the RIT team now. You have located the downed firefighter. Notify command. Relay the location, the surrounding conditions, the air supply, and what type of rescue is needed. Perform a secondary survey to check for entrapment or entanglement. Clean rescues involve more careful manipulation of a downed firefighter and are only performed when surrounding hazards are controlled. Dirty rescues involve immediate extrication due to firefighter medical condition or an imminent danger in the area. If the decision is made to perform a dirty rescue, a good acronym to remember is ABCD. First things first, handle air supply needs. Remember that the Blue Scott Rick bag contains a 60 minute bottle along with a spare mask. To assure the air pack will not slip off while dragging, Reattach the waist buckle in between the legs of the downed firefighter. To do this, loosen the belt on both sides, lift one leg, undo the buckle, and immediately reattach the buckle between the legs. A good tip while doing this is to not unbuckle the belt until you are ready to rebuckle it. C is for chest straps. Chest straps can be tied in an overhand knot so they don't loosen while the firefighter is being dragged. Make sure you tighten these down first before tying them in overhand knots. D is for drag. There are several methods that can be employed to remove a firefighter based on the situation. As always, the situation will dictate action. 
have several strategies to choose from as not every maneuver works for all types of rescues. Here are several ways to move a firefighter. Discuss these and alternate methods between your crews. Firefighter safety is paramount. It's this type of training that gets us all home safe the next day. This type of training is very important. The more we train, the more this material becomes muscle memory. Stay safe out there and we'll see you soon. You ready, buddy? Yeah, when is it? It's your time it to shine. When does it start? It's already recording. This is how we get our bloopers. We start recording now. So are you close to the button? It's your time to shine. <laughs> do you want do you want to practice to look to look? Sexy. Okay, good. Welcome to the April. Whoa, 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 whoa. You gotta wait till we, we gotta like, you know, and action. Do you, you cut all this shit out or? Yeah. I guess you're gonna cut that out. You can. <laughs> it was ready to go. I was ready to go. Alright, re-record. Put steps out here. That's all on video, by the way. I know, but you're gonna cut it out. Same thing, straight. No, no. no. See it, straight face. Hazmat nurse. Total straight face, dude. Because fire and EMS is hazmat nurse. Straight face, go. Welcome to this month's fire and EMS PO. This month we will be covering hazmat nursing, starring our own very, our very own Chief Shaw. In addition to Foley's being covered extensively, we're gonna cover how to change your bedpan and proper bandage changing. 